Many years ago, when I first started growing a vegetable garden using my own unique straw bale gardening method instead of soil, I had no idea how that would transform backyard gardening for millions and how I just may have set the wheels in motion to one day help to end world hunger. Hunger is still a major problem here in the United States as well as around the world, but the reality of hunger today may not be what you think it is. Hunger doesn't necessarily mean that a population has nothing at all to eat, but instead, it often refers to malnutrition, where people simply aren't eating anything close to a balanced diet. A lack of fruits, vegetables, and leafy greens can be at the root of many diet-related diseases. But fresh fruits and vegetables require a level of care and refrigeration after harvest that simply isn't possible in many remote lands. World food programs provide shelf-stable, carbohydrate-rich food supplements, usually made from peas, beans, grains, and soy. Certainly, they fill stomachs, but they often exacerbate diseases like heart disease, cancer, diabetes, even promote obesity. It's an unfortunate fact that obesity in the United States and around the world has become far too common among people who rely on food aid as their primary source of nutrition. The exciting news that I'm here to share with you today is how this revolutionary but simple method of gardening is already providing a unique and viable solution to this problem all around the world. It might surprise you to know that the world's farmers already supply plenty of food to feed the entire Earth's population. The problem is in distributing that harvest. World food programs, are, their biggest challenge today is in getting some kind of food into the hands of these 800 million hungry people every day before it spoils. People in remote locations often have limited access to transportation and refrigeration. So a steady, continuous supply of fresh fruits and vegetables is really essential to avoid that food spoilage and fill that food security and nutrition gap without spoilage. The ultimate solution would be for us to teach all of these hungry people how to grow food themselves, right where they're already located, using only the very limited resources that they have available, with zero outside inputs. Now that's a really, really lofty goal, I agree, but it can be accomplished. History tells us that most revolutionary ideas at their inception are often considered crazy and outlandish rather than rational and effective. straw bale gardening was no different. Origination of this idea, this, this concept to plant vegetables in decomposing bales of straw, this took years to fully develop. But it's since proven effective, and it's been adopted by gardeners all around the world. The genesis of this idea was on the farm where I grew up, where we'd spend a couple of days each summer baling the oat straw after we harvested the grain. Now, normally farmers use straw as livestock bedding because the dry stalks have this amazing capacity to absorb and hold moisture, which kept the livestock dry and healthy. Once in a while, we'd have a bale with a broken string, so it would get tossed against the barn, and shortly it would get rained on and then attacked by insects and worms and fungi and mold, eventually colonized by bacteria. The inside of the bale would begin to break down, and it would become what looked like early stage soil. I would notice that the tallest, healthiest thistles on the whole farm were always the ones that grew out of those crumbling bales. Years later, I went to plant, I bought my first house and I went to plant a vegetable garden, but I discovered, unfortunately, my property had terrible soil. So I thought about building raised bed gardens instead. But at the time, I didn't have $4, much less $400, to build proper raised beds. But what I did have was this recurring memory of these giant thistles growing out of these rotting bales back on the farm. So that's when I began my first experiments with what I started calling my straw bale garden. I quickly discovered that growing vegetables in bales means no weeding. <laughs> Fewer problems with insects and diseases, and the raised height less bending. 
These bales had an amazing capacity to hold moisture, but yet crops planted in the bales couldn't be flooded. The bales would warm up in the spring as they began to decompose, and that helped me plant earlier, and it made the roots grow more, more quickly. Because there was no soil required for this method of gardening, this meant I could set these gardens up anywhere without tools. And because of the quick learning curve, most straw bale gardeners were harvesting within just 60 to 90 days. It's no wonder this method spread quickly. People around the world in the early days of social media began sharing images of their straw bale gardens with towering tomatoes and cabbages the size of small children. <laughs> now you might be wondering, how can a bale of straw provide the nutrients that a vegetable plant needs to grow? It's important to understand that nothing grows well if you plant it into a fresh bale of straw. The bales must first go through a short period of cellular deconstruction, more commonly called decomposition, before they'll support root growth. Insects, worms, fungi, mold, and the heavy lifter of all the decomposers, bacteria, quickly go to work metabolizing the straw bale. Keeping the bales wet for that first two weeks and feeding the bacteria what they like to eat, which is nitrogen, usually from a source of organic or traditional fertilizer, will encourage them to reproduce. They quickly colonize the bale, and then they begin to break the stalks of straw down into cells, and those cells down into molecules. These charged molecules are immediately available to be absorbed through the roots and become part of a new vegetable plant growing out of that bale. This is a lot of science and a lot of exciting biology, but this next part gets me really excited. Despite the name straw bale gardening, in fact, these bales, they don't need to be composed of straw at all. They could be made from baled grass or sugarcane stalks or leaves or grass clippings or lake weeds, essentially any organic material gathered nearby, which means anyone anywhere on earth can gather leaves and grass from their surrounding environment for free, compress that material into a bale, bind that bale with a string or wire, begin the two-week preparation conditioning process, the bale begins to decompose, releases those molecules, they're absorbed through the roots of a brand new vegetable plant. Within 60 days, crops are being harvested from those handmade bales. This gentleman on the left, his name is Narn Nove. He runs an NGO in Cambodia called Akenden. They're charged with helping to mitigate disasters in rural parts of the country. If you talk to a Cambodian farmer, they'll tell you that the biggest disasters they face each year are the floods and droughts. Right after the rice is harvested, the monsoon rains begin, most of the farmland ends up covered with about three meters of flood water. When the floods dissipate and the drought comes, it brings no rain. And with no access to irrigation water, growing crops during the drought isn't possible either. So now they have this four to five month period where there's a food production gap and malnutrition is rampant. The solution we proposed, while it seems simple now, this was revolutionary to these farmers when we brought them the idea. First, we would dig a large pit on their farm. We used the soil excavated from the pit to build a mound, flattened out on top. This plateau was built to a height to exceed the highest annual flood level. We then used a simple wooden box to make bales and compress the waste rice straw to make bales, put the bales up on top of this plateau. After the two-week conditioning period, these bales were then planted. Now, normally, when the monsoon rains arrive, it saturates the soil, and it kills the roots of any vegetables planted in the soil. But because of the extraordinary drainage capacity of these bales, the water runs right out the bottom of the bales and lets air back in, which allows the roots of the vegetable plants to thrive even during the monsoons. When the inevitable drought does arrive, each of these farmers has a large pit right next to the garden, which is still retaining flood water that they can now use for irrigation. Enabling this year-round production of vegetables is not only helping to fill the food security gap, but it's also giving another source of income to these farmers because they can sell any excess harvest during this, these lean months. One of the other big side benefits 
is this waste rice straw now has value to these farmers who traditionally, believe it or not, had resorted to burning their fields to remove the straw before the next planting. Good ideas spread quickly, especially when they provide a simple solution to fill an empty stomach. Straw bale gardening, since I was in Cambodia for a short visit, my friend and taught my friend Narn this method, straw bale gardening has spread quickly there. He's taught more than 3,000 farmers how to implement this method. He's also built many demonstration gardens at schools where the children take notes, draw pictures, and then they go home, teach their parents and grandparents this method. Because 75% of the population in Cambodia is still involved in agriculture, it's likely that these children will one day farm the same land, face the same floods and drought as their ancestors did. Except now, they'll have a skill that will enable them to grow vegetables year-round and avoid this malnutrition. Not far away in the Philippines, people also suffer from food insecurity. But there, 75% of the population lives in cities rather than rural areas. The urban poor own no land, no tools. They have very limited access to water. They have little knowledge of growing anything. And no money to invest in any type of gardening project. My friend Joan V. Paclabar is a young graduate of an agriculture technology program in the Philippines. And she helped us set up some demonstration straw bale gardens at her alma mater, the University of Southeastern Philippines and at ACES Polytechnic. She also helped provide assistance to several urban gardeners who just wanted to start their own straw bale gardens. So together they made bales using waste rice straw at no cost, and then they positioned those bales very near the participant's home, so it was very convenient and secure. Because there's no money available to buy, to often to buy refined fertilizers to begin this process, Instead, many of these bales are treated with Mother Nature's most available, free, 12% nitrogen liquid fertilizer that each of us produces a few times each day. <laughs> this yellow liquid is perfectly sterile. And while it might give off a little ammonia gas, it's very effective at feeding the bacteria inside these bales. Jonavi also teaches her gardeners how to save seed from their existing produce and then treat that seed to use it for their next planting. She encourages them to save and recycle wastewater from cooking, washing dishes, bathing, and carry that outside very conveniently to their garden and keep it watered. The simple instructions she provides have most of her gardeners planting within just two weeks and beginning to harvest just 60 days later. But the real momentum comes when one successful gardener inspires an entire neighborhood to plant their own bales. And because the startup cost is so low, even free, no NGOs or governments or banks or other sponsorship is needed to continue growing these straw successful straw bale gardens. The straw bale gardening method is providing a simple, sustainable, productive solution to overcome all of these difficulties and to grow food for a family or an entire neighborhood with zero outside inputs or investment. Food insecure populations here or anywhere can quickly easily learn this method and because the startup costs are so low, they can set these up anywhere, in a parking lot, on a rooftop, even over top of previously contaminated urban soils. And within 60 to 90 days, fresh fruits and vegetables are already having a huge impact on healthy diets. People and societies are never truly independent and free until they can grow their own food supply. Without that ability, governments, politicians, even tribal leaders will always control their populations much more easily by limiting their food supply than with even the most powerful weapons. Hungry people spend their days concerned only about food and finding food to stifle the cries of their children. Lucky for us in this room today, it's likely we'll never experience this level of hunger firsthand. But a short walk around a city or a town near where you live will most likely bring you to a neighborhood where a straw bale garden providing a bounty of fresh vegetables would have a huge impact on food security and healthy diets. The food grown, that's measurable. 
But what's much more difficult to measure is the astounding positive impact that gardening success can have on one's self-esteem and on an entire neighborhood's level of hopefulness. Growing a garden can bring a person or a society back from the brink of starvation, not just with nourishment for their bodies, but with nourishment for their souls. I'm certain that you know someone who could benefit from the healthy produce of a straw bale garden. Or you may know of a group or an organization that you could help to implement this method. You may want to start a straw bale garden in your own backyard next spring and see just how simple it really is to grow your own fresh fruits and vegetables. Don't hesitate. Because the seed of an idea first planted so long ago has now taken really deep root. And with your help, we can continue to plant this idea around the world and watch it grow to benefit not just backyard hobby gardeners, but to help fill the food security gap for people everywhere where hunger, the worst of all diseases, could finally be eliminated. Thank you.